What's up everybody, Elizabeth here with Bloom Creative Company, a Squarespace design agency. And in this video, it's actually a three part series of everything content block editors. So all those little blocks that you can add into your site to add text or video or a space or a line, we're going through every single one of those and how to adjust them, how to make them more custom and how to use them in your site. So this is part one, two and three, let's dive in. I'm gonna edit again. Let's start working towards the top. Now we're getting into the meat of it. So form, this is where you are going, this is how people can reach out to you. So anytime you go on a website and there's a contact form and you're looking to reach out, you need something from that company, from that person. This is what we're gonna be setting up. So if you have a, a form on your page, you wanna label it so you know where it came from. So maybe I contact form on contact page just so I know what's working if I wanted to test things. So let's say I didn't need a subject, I'm gonna delete, I don't need a message, but I do need a phone number. So I'm gonna click on the form field and I'm gonna scroll down and click phone. And if I want this to be required, click that, another form field. So you, you can do text, text area, subject, so t-shirt size. select one. So you'll notice here, t-shirt size, select one, description. And these are our drop down options. So maybe a black, oh, size, small, medium, large. And if I hit apply, these are all gonna be down here. So let's save that really quick so I can show you. Boom, small, medium, large, drop down. So if we wanna go back and add some more options, you can add a checkbox, same kind of setup, you have a description option and then all of your options here appear down here. So once you delete those, there they are, add a form field. You do a survey where they can select which options, kind of cool. You can do name, password, address, Twitter, handle, website, email, and it's all pretty self-explanatory. You put that in and you have the ability to change. Right now it says email one, and we delete that email. And then there's placeholder text, email here. And then you can make it required or not. So if you scroll down, you know, there's a bunch of different things that you could do. You can add a line in there to break it up, a date, time, phone, number, currency, or hidden. So we're gonna apply, oh, major important step, storage. You wanna make sure that it is sending to your email or if you are you know if you're connected to mailchimp or zapier google drive you can have it built out into a spreadsheet advanced so once someone does submit you can put a message here thank you we'll be in touch within 24 hours whatever that is your button alignment you can put it wherever you want you can change the label go and then post submit and redirect so if you wanted to redirect them back to the home page or any other page, maybe back to the test page, you could do that as well. So that form is done. Newsletter. So this is your opt-in. So when people subscribe, this is where you are putting, where you are getting their information. So form name, newsletter form, title, subscribe, de description, Email address, you can require their name. And a disclaimer, we will not use your email, we will not sell your email to third parties, all that kind of disclaimer stuff. Sign up, you can change the button right here. Alignment, you can make it left justified, center, right. And then here's another, if you need to save space and make it more condensed, you could stack them where it's all on top of each other if you want it on the side of the page or you can float them. Storage. So you can connect MailChimp, Zapier, Google Drive, or you can have it go right into Squarespace email campaigns. So you would wanna go into your email campaigns and create a new list, and that's where you would connect the list. Then again, post submit if you wanted a message there or redirect them to a different page. So if you had like a lead magnet that you were trying to get someone's email address, you could click to link the lead magnet page and redirect them there because they gave up their email address for the download, whatever that is, hit apply. 
we'll keep going down. Map. So when you have your map, you're going to put an email address in. And then once you, if you just hit enter and not apply, but enter, it'll re reconfigure where you're at. But under design, you can show, I mean, it's just like Google Maps because it's done through Google. You can show whatever information and then you can change the color for satellite. Minimal light, minimal dark, minimal blue. And with, with this map, arrows appear at the bottom because you're able to bring the map up and down however you need it to be. Maybe you want it a little bit smaller and you want to put a spacer to the side. Maybe you need the subscribe on one side and the map on the other. So again, find where that black line is. Maybe it looks like that. Maybe, you know, you can just play around with where you want everything to fit on the page. And it will always tell you where you can move it around to as well. Code. I don't build any of my sites with code. I have found it to be more beneficial for my clients that manage their sites after the fact. So I don't use code, so I'm not going to show you how to use code either. And then there's some other roadblocks that you'll hit too. Squarespace support won't help you with code. And then it just requires a whole new learning curve of learning something else when you should be focusing on your business is my philosophy. So we're not going into that. There is a calendar piece if you wanted to add a calendar, but you would have to create a calendar page and that would link it to here. So let's see if that will, no, that won't do anything. So we'll, we'll follow up with another, another video on that. I'm going to delete this for now. Appointment scheduling, this is Acuity. The scheduler is also within Squarespace now, but if I wanted to connect to my Acuity scheduling, that this is how I would do it here. I would add my existing and it would pull up my discovery, book a discovery call, book a end of project teaching session, book a call, all that kind of stuff. All my options would show up here. And it's, you just simply log in. You click the button and it'll ask you to log in. Zola, I actually use this for my wedding. Um, you just connect your registry name and it will pop up. Just super, super simple. Um, you can display as many items or as many few. Add padding, don't add padding. And then once they click on the item, it'll go to Zola where they can purchase or check out. So that was really actually very handy. And streamline bands in town. Again, if you're a band, you're gonna put your band name in there and then it'll populate all of your information. And then really the only other things that I would recommend that don't go beyond something super specific is Twitter, social links, or Instagram. So if we do our social links, you're just putting your URL in here. And then under design, you can change where they fall, left, right, make them super large or super small. And then you can just play around with what these all look like here too. And then if we wanted to add our Twitter, there we go, there it is. So you would add an account, you would log into your account because that's how it will pull all of your, your tweets that you're tweeting out and it will automatically populate. If you send a tweet from your phone, it will populate on your site because you are logged in and it's sharing that information. So here's where you could you know, add a search to search through your tweets. You'd have to connect it, of course. But the same thing goes for Instagram as well. You have to log into your Instagram account. So if I scroll down here, you're gonna add an account. It's gonna log you in. Let's see if I can log into mine really quick. But I have a feeling really quick is not going to mean really quick. Yep, it's not going to work for me right now. Okay. But you would log in and then you would just change the display by how many you wanted to do. So if I wanted eight items, four across, I would come back over here for padding light box again. So if you wanted people to click on the image and make it bigger, you could open the links in the new window. And then you could change the size of the images that are displayed. 
And then something else that's kind of fun is you can make it a, a slideshow, which is kind of different because usually you see everyone's displayed out and there's a couple different ways that you can do it. You have your thumbnails below, then you can always change sizing your thumbnails. You can add arrows to go forward and back. You can have it automatically go every three seconds. You could crop it. And then if you have the caption, you could show the caption or you don't have to show the caption, but if you click on that, it'll show you where to put it. It could show on hover when people are hovering over. Pretty self-explanatory as you kind of just check the boxes and go down each step as you add any of the content pieces. So I'll hit apply there. And that is pretty much it for your basic content blocks and how to customize those. That was part three. Let me know what you thought in the comments below if you need help with anything, specific questions, any follow-up. And if you are a business and you're stuck trying to get your site exactly how you want it to be, that's what we're here for. That's what we do. You can send us an email to hello at bloomwebsitedesign.com and we're happy to help you get your message and service out to the world. But other than that, that, is, that wraps up that three-part series and we are busy producing a lot more videos. So please smash that subscribe button so you are alerted for all the next stuff that we are coming out with. We're still starting with all those basics and kind of the 101 tutorials and then we'll start getting into the more advanced kind of meteor stuff. So subscribe. We'll see you on the next video. Again, I'm Elizabeth with Bloom Creative Co. Thank you for being here.